Ever since I started cooking, right, every time I visit the supermarket to buy my ingredients, I look up at the wall of soya sauce, right, and think, how can there be so many soya sauce? There's like 20, 30 kinds, and then within the same brand, there's different qualities and, you know, top grade or standard. So I thought, why not just find out for myself? So today, I bought a ton of soya sauce to try. So a bit of introduction, to start off with, there are a lot of kinds of soya sauce, a lot of different genres, the Indonesian have ketchup manis, the Japanese have shoyu, but essentially all soya sauce or soya sauce starts out at the same place. Then people do stuff to it, so people either you know make it add caramel to make it dark soya sauce, make it uh, gluten free, make it less sodium, and then there's also the different uh, qualities right so for top quality and standard quality so people dilute it down or there's a lot of ways to go about you know creating all these tiers that's why in the supermarket you find that there's tons of choices but for today's experiment today's taste test i limited it to only light soy sauce because this is the most common when it comes to eating or cooking i also limited it to only soy sauce that you can find in the supermarket within a reasonable price point because this is something that I would want to know because I use soy sauce quite often so today we have let's introduce from the cheapest to the most expensive I have the fair price house brand like soy sauce which goes for 28 cents per 100 milliliters second most expensive will be the Da Hua standard one which goes for 55 cents per 100 milliliters. And moving on will be the Tiger top grade quality one, which goes at 72 cents per 100 milliliters. The fourth most expensive would be Kikoman. I mean, Kikoman should be the most popular soy sauce brand. And it goes for 78 cents per 100 milliliters. And the most expensive soy sauce we have today is Da Hua Superior Light Soy Sauce which goes for $1.31 per 100ml so you, as you can see I still kept it within a certain uh, price range because anywhere above this price range I don't think it's for everyday use anymore I'm gonna split the taste test into three parts so first we're gonna taste it just on its own am I a soy sauce expert and do I know what I'm tasting for? no but we're just gonna taste it the second one would be for dipping because a main use of soy sauce is as a dipping sauce most predominantly in hot pot so we're gonna dip some fish balls which are just you know boiled up nothing special and then lastly we're gonna cook with it which I prepared a uh, soy sauce chicken but that's for later so yeah let's taste I'll just try from right to left so that's easier so the cheapest one fair price like soy sauce most probably they just it's an in-house brand, so most probably they just bought up some cheap soy sauce and rebranded it. Smells very artificial. A little sip, just a bit will do. Ooh, very salty. Ooh, it's very rough. <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of weird going about the tasting like it's wine or something like that. But right, soy sauce is actually amazing. The brewing of soy sauce, right? It's not that different from whiskey and wine. I don't want to go too much into it, but basically they take soya beans and then they put it in salt and then they introduce some culture, some for it to ferment down, and they take those juices. That is soya sauce. This process can take from six months all the way up to 18 months. This straight off I want to say that this is very very artificial. Because soya sauce, in order to you know make it cheaper, there's a way where you can chemically synthesize it. Not pleasant this one. Moving on. Tiger brand top quality like soy sauce. Clear my palette. Very salty, but not as rough. Not bad. There's some sort of fragrance there. I don't mind this. And significantly, significantly lighter in color also. Oh, this this is not bad. Moving on. Da Hua superior like soy sauce. Oh, this is very tasty. I'm gonna make a wild guess. I think there's MSG here. Am I right? I'm wrong, there's no MSG. 
Huh. This is very tasty. There's a very MSG like taste on the mouth. A lot of umami. Not bad. And then on the same brand, the standard quality one. This is something I'm super curious because one is superior and one is standard. And on the, on the ingredients list, right, they show both the same ingredients. Try. Oh, this is rougher. This is more like this. Saltier, not as fragrant. Aha. Uh -huh. So there is a difference. And then lastly, Kikoman. This is salty, a bit rough, but there's this fragrance, almost like an alcohol fragrance. This has a very, very distinctive fragrance. I think if I blind taste this, I can identify it from all the soy sauce. Not bad, but in this sample size, it seems that roughness, that this like very zingy saltiness is a indicator that is cheap. But yeah, very, very distinctive fragrance. Okay. And I would say just tasting on its own, right? The most expensive one actually stands out a lot. This is very yummy. Tai Hua. I can see this easily being used for dipping with sashimi or something else. And it's just very, very smooth on the tongue. It's not so, it's not too salty such that it's like, irritates the palate. Speaking of dipping, let's move on. So fish balls. The fish ball alone, as you know, most fish balls is are already seasoned. So there's a bit of salt in it. It's so let's see the interaction between this and soy sauce. The roughness is cut a lot by the dough, understandably. But you don't taste anything else. You don't taste any fragrance anymore. It's super flat. Moving on. Actually, don't taste a lot of salt. When dipping this, this actually tastes very diluted. Move on, move on. Okay, to my favorite one so far. Oh no, I'm not sure if I'm biased, but this actually tastes quite good. It's as though the fish ball have a new layer of seasoning. Interesting. This tastes more like a seasoning sauce, a, a, like a, a, a ready tuned seasoning sauce compared to just a light sauce sauce. This is delicious. Moving on. Ooh, very average. A bit of a zing, a bit of a... As this soya sauce sort of a smell, unpleasant smell to it, but okay. And lastly, kikoman. Oh, there, there it is. Even with the fish ball, there's this, there's this smell. It's hard to describe the taste, but there is definitely a resemblance of alcohol to it. Hmm. Now to the part that's most important to me, cooking with soya sauce. Okay, let me just uh, easy clap my chicken drumsticks here. Okay, so drumsticks. So these drumsticks, right, the way I cooked them, right, was very, very basic. I basically added like this much soy sauce, it and two cups of water, and then like like a very, very basic braising liquid. But you should not do this. If you were to cook soy sauce, you should add like spices, cinnamon, star anise, spring onions, and it's best to use a whole chicken. But I thought that all those things right would compound, you know, that all those things will make it harder to taste the soy sauce. So I went with this method. So yeah, to try the first one. Alright, had some time to think about it and I'm just going to throw my scores for what I thought for each soy sauce now and the remarks. I really wish that I could have done this taste test blind so that maybe the knowing the prices won't skew my judgement that much. But it seems like a common trend is that the cheaper soy sauce seems to be more rough and irritating on the palate. Yes, it does the job of seasoning the food. Fun fact, soy sauce was invented because salt was historically very expensive. So they needed another way to season food. But nowadays, salt is super cheap. So we actually don't want soy sauce to be, you know, just making our food salty. Good soy sauce 
because of the fermentation process should give an extra layer of flavor to your food. But that said, we have to be dollar conscious and know what our soy sauce is doing to our food. If you were to cook something very regular, let's say like seasoning fried rice or you know cha bi hoon or whatever, I would think that going for a cheaper soy sauce just to add seasoning without using salt is a better way. But if you were to cook uh, something where soy sauce sticks the foreground, like soy sauce chicken, uh, anything that is braised, or even just a dipping sauce, right? Spend a few dollars more to buy a better soy sauce. I wish that I could talk more about the healthiness, the health value of all these soy sauce. But unfortunately, I'm no food nutritionist. So I'm just gonna throw the ingredients up again. And it seems like Kikoman is the only one that, had, that has all ingredients all, in, all its ingredients are things that I can read. So everything said and done, what would I recommend? I would recommend having two soy sauce. One for dishes where soy sauce don't have that big of an impact and one for something that is more prominent like soy sauce chicken. So I would choose the Kikoman for everyday cooking and the Da Hua Superior like soy sauce for dishes where you want your soy sauce to have more presence. But obviously, I cannot go and taste every single soy sauce on the market. But I would recommend go taste the soy sauce you have at home. Good soy sauce should have a layer of fragrance to it and a layer of umami to it because of the fermentation. It should not just be salty. If it's just salty, as we have seen here, it's cheap. Uh, I've used soy sauce numerous times, but this is the first time. I've gotten such a close look at what it is and what it does to a dish. I think it's very interesting for myself too. And I hope it has been interesting for you as well. So that's all for this time. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Do like the video if you like it. Dislike it if you dislike it. And subscribe if you haven't. And yeah, until the next one.